this is Martin and welcome to a just a fun little video this is my personal top 10 best bike conventions of the last 50 years uh, I'm sure you have your top 10 too but uh, I thought I'd let it, everyone know my top 10 and uh, if, if you're not using some of these things uh, you might want to consider them they are truly what I consider the best inventions of the 50 years. So num we're going to start with number 10 and number one will be my favorite. Number 10 is bike trailers. These new high-tech bike trailers, well not new but the last 20 years or so at least, these new high-tech bike trailers are a excellent way of touring. These bike trailers allow you to keep the handling of your bike pretty much as normal. So you can tour and not have a bike flexing back and forth or all the bad handling characteristics that you get when you put panniers on a bike. Trailers actually make touring for the novice a viable alternative. You can uh, you can tour, and your bike's going to handle about the way it normally handles without a without a load. So this way, you can have a load and not have all the adverse handling effects on the bicycle. Of course, you still have the weight, and you'll have to haul that weight uphill, but that doesn't change any whether you put your baggage on the bike or in a trailer. And of course, trailer is a nice way of getting groceries too, though I prefer a smaller amount of groceries and using panniers that you can carry into the grocery store with you and then just throw them on the back of the bike and go home. I consider that a little easier than a trailer. But for my number 10, the trailers are the best invention of 50 years. Number nine, suspension forks or suspension on bikes, especially mountain bikes. And suspension with uh, lockouts. It took a while to get lockouts to come uh, pretty much standard on bikes, but uh, now that they're here, the suspension is viable. Before, the, without lockouts, it made these, it made the mountain bike extremely horrible on the road. It wasn't any fun to ride. So if you're riding to the trails, a lockout on the fork now allows you to get to the trails with much more fun on the road. Nothing, nothing worse than having a full suspension bike soaking up all your efforts on the road. So now, uh, like this picture of this gravity, this one has a lockout on the rear suspension and a lockout on the front. So now we have suspension bikes for off-road and some of them for on-road. Uh, suspension for comfort bikes is, is uh, normal and practical in some places. But uh, <clears throat> the suspension has made mountain biking much, much more enjoyable. And that is number nine. Number eight is built up wheels. It was extremely rare uh, just 20 years ago to find a set of built-up wheels of any kind of quality. <clears throat> Almost all the wheels that were being built up from manufacturers were being machine built or just quickly built by hand and they just weren't very good at all. You had to have a really good wheel builder build your wheels if you were a serious cyclist. You could not buy stock wheels. But today uh, for as little as a hundred dollars, you can get a very strong set of built-up wheels. Now the hubs on the hundred dollar wheels won't be the smooth running Capnolo super records that some people are used to, but again you can spend a little more money, such as like a hundred and fifty dollars or so, and get maybe a 
Shimano set of hubs or a cassette bearing set that might roll a little smoother for you. But the main thing is, you can buy built up wheels, and you can spend as much as you want of course on those, that are ready to go. They're shipped to you and uh, they are normally fairly true. Now my experience on these lower priced wheels are they are not perfectly true and you will have to immediately put them in a chewing stand and fine tune them. But for the new inventions for the last 50 years, it makes my number 8 list. And number 7. Number 7 is disc brakes. Disc brakes were, was a long time waiting. Uh, I bought the first mountain bike back in around 1982 when Ross first made their first production mountain bike. Came with cantilever brakes. And if you were in any kind of muddy kind of conditions, the brakes would, you would have mud on your rims and the braking would be just absolutely gritty and horrible. So I waited about 15 years and finally they came, started coming out with disc brakes and what a great improvement. Not, plus, you know, not only is it cleaner braking service it, because it doesn't get muddy as easy, but it's also an improved braking. So now we have a braking surface that uh, you can allow to heat up and you don't have to worry about your rims uh, heating up and you don't have to worry about your rims wearing through pr prematurely with all the grit that you've been grinding in there with the with the uh, with the uh, braking surface so disc brakes has been a huge improvement and I love disc brakes uh, they are now using disc brakes on road bikes too so for those of you in extremely mountainous areas where you have long descents, you can now safely ride your brakes all the way down. Heat those things up to a boiling point and you're still going to have brakes. So disc brakes has been just a wonderful addition to bikes and it makes my number seven list. Number six, aero bars. I've been told that aero bars are racing components only, but that depends on how you mount them to your bike and what kind of bike you're mounting them to. I never have mounted aero bars on a road bike. Drop bars have enough positions there where I really don't want it cluttering up my bike. My, my road bike I have as a min minimalized bike. I put at least a amount of accessories on it as possible. So the last thing I want is aero bars clogging up the bike or uh, taking up some room on the handlebars. Now they do make aero bars that have flip-up pads which give you all the positions on your road bike drop bars, but I still just don't like them on there. I like, I don't want to add the weight, I don't want to add uh, the clutter. But for flat bar bikes, you, I have uh, hybrid bikes and adventure bikes, the addition of aero bars is a great sec second or third or fourth position alternative. When you have a higher mounted bar, such as in a hybrid bike or especially a comfort bike, comfort bikes have very highly mounted bars, when you put an aero bar on these bikes, you are not lowering yourself down into an aero position. You are lowering yourself down to a position equivalent to riding over the brake hoods on road bars. So it's more upright and a, a very, very comfortable alternative of taking all the weight off your hands. So I'm a big fan of aero bars for touring or sport riding and uh, anything with a flat bar. And because it's been such a comfortable way of riding, uh, taking pressure off your shoulders because you get different positions in your shoulders now, since it's such a comfortable alternative, it makes my top 10 list at number 6. 
10, number five. The new flat protection tires. Flat protection tires that roll as good as any tire out there. These four I have here are all specialized tires. They are all specialized armadillo protection layer on them. And all four of these tires I use on my bikes. So they've been thoroughly tested over a long period of time and I found them to be very flat resistant. I've also found them to be very low rolling resistance. And the tread patterns, such as the tire on the, as you go from the left, the, uh, it is the all condition tire that I'm using on my road bikes and hybrid bikes. Next to that is the uh, Crossroads tire, which I'm using on my mountain bike. Next to that is the Hemisphere tire, which I'm using on my comfort bike. And next to that is the Infinity, which I am using on my adventure bike. So all these tires are flat protected. They all run very high PSIs for, for what they are, anywhere from 80 PSI on the Crossroads tire to 125 PSI on a 23 millimeter all condition tire. Uh, the Hemisphere is running a, s a maximum of 60 for a comfort bike, and that's the way you want those. You buy a comfort bike for, for comfort. But all these tread patterns and all these tires are just absolutely wonderful tires, the best in the world. And I've ridden the best tires in the world and raced on the best tires in the world. And after 40 years of riding, I have found these tires to be nothing, nothing close to anything on the market like them. So all my bikes use specialized tires exclusively. Only downside is you need a you can only buy specialized tires at a specialized dealer. But these tires are just absolutely wonderful and they make my top 10 at number 5. Number 4 is basically the Lycra clothing. Before Lycra there was some limited kind of stretchy fabric that helped quite a bit on cycling and they had leather chamois but since the lycras come out <clears throat> they've also come out with synthetic chamois which are much much easier to take care of than leather and uh, what the shorts used to be is maybe a wool with a and uh, it was a wool with a some kind of a stretchy fabric woven in there, but they never ever had the kind of fit that lycra does. Lycra is like a second skin. That way, you don't have any folds in the fabric. You don't have anything wrinkling. So, I think lycra fabrics have is what allowed me to ride race across America without scraping skin off and having to quit the ride and then once you've scraped skin off it's pretty much over with you can't it's pretty hard to get the skin to heal and uh, infection is a major concern after that so lycra shorts have uh, made long-distance cycling uh, absolute joy and along with that is the gel padding that they put in gloves. This gel padding has been a, a real lifesaver for ultra marathoners too. Uh, you can adjust your bike to take all the weight off your hands, but by the time you've done that, you've eliminated a forward weight drop on your legs. So performance-wise, it's uh, it's not. It doesn't give you a as a flat of a lumbar back, your lower back is the lumbar region, and the more you tilt your saddle forward, the more possible it is to get in a flat position without putting weight on the sensitive areas of your sitting areas. So with the compromise of a saddle tilt just maybe just slightly above level, 
You do put a little bit of weight on your hands, but you are also putting weight forward on the cranks. And this gives you a much better performance uh, riding position. So the gel padding is made a, in the gloves, and it's made taking the vibrations out of the road and long distance riding a much more enjoyable thing. So between the shorts and the gloves, the, uh, the Lycra fabrics make number four on my list. And number three, clipless pedals. These are <laughs> such a huge advance over toe clips that uh, I would never consider riding toe clips ever again. The uh, clipless pedal makes uh, a solid connection to the to the bike gives you all the pedal stroke you need because your feet are well attached you don't have to tighten down a strap over your feet to get a good attachment you simply turn up the tension on the uh, pedals and you can be locked in as tight as you want the alternative to this was toe clips, and I spent my entire life going through toenails because the toe clips fit was so bad. Um, for one, I had to uh, actually build my own extensions on the toe clips because they never made one big enough for my huge size 12 foot. But they never actually made the toe clip tall enough for my foot either. And this little, this little bit of pinching eventually would uh, destroy my big toenail and I spent the first 20 years of my life going through toenails until I finally bought my first set of look pedals and uh, now all my bikes are equipped with SPD pedals but because this eliminated uh, such a huge problem with toe clips and added such a great way of attaching yourself to the bike Clipless pedals make number three on my list of great inventions. Number two, no one would believe this, but the plastic water bottle cage is my number two favorite invention of the last 50 years. The number, the, uh, the plastic cages are absolutely clean. You, got, you have a plastic bottle in a plastic cage. So you don't really have anything wearing off between the two. It's a great compatibility. And I've never, ever had a bottle come out going over a bad bump with a plastic cage. The plastic cage has held my bottles perfectly for the last uh, 20 years. I'm not sure when I bought my first plastic cage. Maybe 15 years ago. But they, I still have my first plastic cage. You would think it would have cracked and broke by now, being just a plain old plastic cage, but it hasn't. I still have all the cages I've bought for all my bikes. Of course, all five bikes have plastic cages on them now, and they are just wonderful. The alternative of the aluminum cage, and why I love this plastic cage so much is the aluminum would wear off on the bottle. Every time you put a bottle in and out, the aluminum would come off, the aluminum on the cage would come off on the bottle. And by the time I was done with my ride, the bottle was black with aluminum. And of course, my hands were black with aluminum from touching the bottle. And anything my hands touched, like my face or anything else, was all black. I put up with this black, ugly, aluminum for a long time and when they came out with the plastic cages it ended and what a great joy that was so that's why this simple little invention makes number two on my top 10 list and now for the number one the best bicycle invention in the last 50 years and it's actually a more of a general thing it's all of the different bikes and styles and materials they're building bikes out of this wide choice of bikes is my number one choice for 
best inventions. It's, it's uh, an incredible time to be a cyclist. Your choice in bicycles is immense. And uh, it's just, uh, in, for me, it's very enjoyable to be able to buy a bike set up specifically for the kind of riding I want to do with it. I don't have to compromise anything on a bike anymore. I own five bikes. I own a road bike, traditional road bike with drop bars, 700C. I own a hybrid with the 700C, and this is a true hybrid because it has a 72 degree head tube angle. There are hybrids out there that are simply racing bikes with a flat bar on them, such as this one. This carbon high-tech uh, motor baton is a racing frame with just with uh, they've taken the drops off and put a flat bar on it. So it's I don't know what you would call this bike. I I don't call it a hybrid because of the it has a 73 degree racing angle. So this this one that I bought is a true hybrid with a 72 degree angle, which is more relaxed. The other bike I another bike I own is a what's called adventure bikes. These are probably the newest invention out there. These are 700 C bikes that allow for a wide, wide range of tire widths. It also has a suspension fork with a lockout. These bikes use uh, pretty much the pretty much 29er uh, mountain bike frame or mountain bike technology, except that these are light duty and not intended for heavy duty off-roading. These bikes are intended to be on the, basically on the road or light very light trail use or gravel roads. So this is a way of traveling down a nice smooth road with your fork locked out or turning down that road you wanted to, to see but went, couldn't see it before because you didn't want to take it down, didn't want to take your road bike down there. So this one, you flip the lever, turn on the suspension fork and head on down the road with your little fatter tires and uh, in a more upright seating position. So these bikes give you a, a lot of choices in the kind of terrain you can ride. And it makes an excellent choice for the only, as an only bike you may own. That's the third bike I own. The fourth is the traditional uh, 26 inch wheeled hardtail mountain bike uh, with a lockout fork. I ride to the trails and this bike is fun to ride on the road with the lockout fork and I get to the trail without even stopping I flip my fork I'm in full suspension mode and I hit the trails and uh, usually I, I will let I will stop and take uh, air out of the tires uh, my tires run anywhere from 25 psi to 80 and for off-roading I'll take them down to about 35 and that's my fourth bike my fifth bike is a traditional comfort bike with a high upright handlebar and a suspension fork with 26 inch fat tires on there. Uh, this bike picture here it has the internal gearing, mine does not, but uh, the hybrid bike gives you a well sit up position and uh, it's, uh, it's a very fun way to ride bike trails. So besides these five bikes, these well, these five bikes actually give me a different riding position every time. And besides being tuned especially to the kind of riding conditions I'm going to be using them for, these different positions really help me from day to day recover from the previous ride. Being in a different position is a great advantage for me to recover from the ride, the day's ride before. So besides these five, there's all kinds of choices out there. Besides the, uh, you know, we have a high-tech flat bar racing bike here. This is one of my favorites. It's a lightweight, uh, compact framed, disc braked hybrid. This bike, when you live in the mountains, is just a beautiful bike has a wide range gearing for those long, long climbs. It has flat bars to control the descents and it has disc brakes to control the heat that uh, you may encounter on a long, st 
steep downhill with uh, hairpin turns. I had my, I have an invention bike set up just for that. Then we have these uh, very specific bikes such as this, this is a triathlon bike or time trial bike, just built for time trialing and going as fast as you can without a draft. These bikes are very fast, probably the fastest of any bike because of the aerodynamics. As long as you got a aligned frame, <coughs> aligned wheels, and good bearing surfaces, aerodynamics become the most important thing on a bike. I use the 18 mile an hour rule, <coughs> which means once you've achieved a strength level where you can maintain an average speed of 18 miles an hour, to go beyond that takes a great deal of strength because you're basically just pushing wind at that point. So any bike that eliminates partial wind resistance, and your body is by far the biggest wind resistance, I think they do make aero bikes which, uh, which might help you a quarter mile an hour in wind resistance. and maybe a little more than that if you are a professional riding at 30 miles an hour. At 30 miles an hour, even the, even the brake cables would probably slow you down a, a, an eighth to a quarter of a mile an hour. So these bikes are very fast, very, very fun to ride if you like speed. Next to the choice, choices in bikes is that, you know, we didn't have full suspension mountain bikes just maybe 15 years ago. So today is full suspension mountain bikes, and this one pictured here has lockouts on the front and rear, so getting to the trails on the road is still enjoyable. But the full suspension definitely makes off-roading much more fun. Another, just another one of the many, many different kinds of uh, bike choices there are today. Uh, next for the purist is the single speed. This is a single speed off-road but of course there's the uh, single speed on-road too and of course those a lot of the on-road single speeds are fixed gears which people really like uh, again these are very simple bikes and uh, for the purist who just wants to go out there and never shift and just use the bike as is these are great bikes to have fun with too Next is the uh, new crank forward design. As you can see, this crank set where you pedal is moved forward of that seat tube. This forward position get, makes, uh, gives you a flat foot when properly adjusted. When you are on a traditional bike and it's properly adjusted, there's no way you're going to ever be able to lay a flat foot on the ground when you stop. You're going to be on the very tips of your toes higher the bottom bracket, the, the, the higher up you're going to be. So for riding bi traditional bikes in town with lots of stoplights, it's a real pain. You have to stop, get off your bike, wait, get back on, get back in your pedals if you're using clipless or you're using toe clips, and it becomes a big hassle. These bikes allow you to just stop, put a foot down, stay in your saddle, and it makes a very good city bike. The only downside of these bikes, I, I have owned a Trek Pure and a Giant Revive, which were both crank forwards. Very fun bikes to ride. Very fun in the city because you can just stop and put your feet down. But unfortunately, when I use these bikes in the extreme, in the mountains, in a very steep 20% grade dirt road, I injured my knee very badly biomechanical position of these crank forward bikes put your knees in a very bad position so anybody that don't that aren't genetically endowed with a, you know with wonderful joints will have trouble with these when climbing hills next is the cyclocross bike which has been around for quite a while but Today's cycle cross bikes are now being equipped with disc brakes. Another nice feature. And something that we certainly didn't have 
10, 20 years ago. Next is the, uh, there's been just a huge outcrop of cruiser bikes in all kinds of colors and styles. So if you're kind of a stylish person uh, and you want something really different, your choices in cruiser bikes are almost unlimited. There's a huge amount of selection of cruiser bikes. This one I've got pictured here is because it's so unusual. This bike uses three inch wide tires, really wide, you know, fun go across sand and things. The wider your tire is on sand, the better. And these make great beach bikes. Comes with fenders. This one has a three speed internally geared transmission and just lots of fun. Next, we have a whole series of recumbent bikes. This, this recumbent uh, bike has exploded in, in the amount of choices you have. Just huge amounts. Uh, this one is a, somewhat of a non-traditional. It's using 20, two 20 inch wheels front and rear. Most of the serious uh, recumbents now are, are using probably a 26 on the, on the rear. But uh, this is typical of the, uh, you get a seat back that you can push against. You have pedals that are completely crank forward. And for people with back problems, these bikes completely eliminate your back. Since your back is in a reclined position, uh, anybody with surgery or anything like with any uh, back problems at all, these kind of bikes usually solve your problems. I owned a recumbent, oh, back in uh, about 1988, I bought my first recumbent, and uh, it is a very comfortable position. The downsides of recumbents are you can't change position. You can slide forward and back in the seat a little bit, but you lose that very important uh, standing position you get on a traditional bike where you can stand, stretch out, and, uh, and move around while you're on the bike. The other course, the other downside is this is, again, just like the crank forward bikes, this is a very uh, bio biomechanically incorrect position for your body. This, uh, this is using your hip flexors in a way that they were never designed to be used, and it's using angles of exertion on your legs that were never designed to be used to. So I would... <clears throat> So for some people, again, climbing steep hills with, with low cranking speeds will place your knees at a much higher stress level than a traditional bike. So anybody with weak knees will need to avoid, uh, you will need to avoid steep hills. You will need to keep your crank speed at a higher RPM of at least 90 to avoid any knee injuries if you have uh, any pr propensity to uh, weak knees. And of course the choices in recumbents now are wide, including trikes. Here we have a, uh, I think these are called a, uh, there's, del there's two kinds of trikes now. One is the, uh, uh, the single wheel forward and the one is the single wheel back. Uh, one is called a delta and one is a this is a cat trike, or people call these cat trikes, because you're actually steering with the two front wheels. Uh, from what I know, these bikes are more stable, and of course, you know, your ground, your, uh, your weight to the ground on this one is only about six to eight inches off the ground. So stability-wise, this is probably safer than most uh, Delta trikes, such as uh, this one. This one uses 20-inch uh, rears and 16-inch front tires to give you a lower center of gravity but uh, it's probably if you took a very sharp turn you would probably need to lean a little bit on these bikes to uh, to keep it upright and of course the upside on these is if you do fall over it's a very short drop so uh, road rash is the only thing you're going to probably have to worry about not broken bones so that's one of the advantages of these low slung recumbents but the main disadvantage of it, and the reason I would never ride one on the road, is visibility. Uh, even with a flag, uh, 
you are below car level, so you can't see over the top of cars, which is a huge advantage with a conventional bike. So I would limit these to a bike trail only. Having these on an open road with, uh, with car traffic passing you, I don't have enough courage for that. And along with the recumbents, we've had even uh, more inventions, such as a side-by-side, -side, which, which we haven't seen. You know, you know, at the turn of the century, they were making side-by-side -side, uh, tandems. But uh, now there's, there's a lot of choices in side-by-side -side tandems in what's called quads. And uh, these, these bikes are especially fun because each rider gets to pedal at whatever speed crank speed they want. So you could have a rider that likes to pedal at 60 RPM and a rider that likes to pedal at 100 RPM side by side and perfectly happy together. These, uh, these bikes have a wider footprint of course on the road and take up more road. Now I would say that's probably not more dangerous because taking up more road means you're at a higher visibility level than you would be as a single bike. So you put a big old sign, a slow moving vehicle sign or something on the back of one of these, it's probably perfectly safe on the road. The only downside is because they are so wide, uh, if the shoulder is narrow, you can't get completely off the road and out of the way of traffic. But again, this is just more fun alternatives with all the choices of bikes we have. And the final picture here is a very unusual setup where we have a recumbent trike with a recumbent trike trailer attached and making this a, uh, a removable tandem. And again, with this bike setup, each rider uh, pedals independently in any gear they choose. So these are really fun setups. If you have a, we have a great bike trail system here where I live and I wanted to ride with somebody. These tandem alternatives are just wonderful. Just a wonderful way to travel. Wonderful way to ride bikes. And that's my top 10 for the day. Thanks for listening and take care.